I think that fonts is one of the great hidden secrets in the passive income game. And you don't need to spend big money in order to get decent fonts to help you make passive income. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through how you can use public domain fonts, which are completely free. They have no copyright restrictions attached to them. And you can use these public domain fonts to make passive income. If you're a beginner, if you're intimidated by making passive income online through digital downloads, this is the right place for you to be. Let's jump in. All right, I'm on a site called publicdomainfiles.com and there's a section in here for fonts, it's right there. So when I click on it, I get over 100 free fonts to download and use and they are completely free. Public domain means that there's no copyright restrictions attached to them. So you can simply download the font and then you can just go at it. So this is actually the one I'm gonna download right now. This is called Graffiti Paintbrush Regular Font. I'm gonna click the download button and we'll download the font. Now, when you download the font, it's gonna be a zip file. It's gonna look like this. When I double click on the zip file, it's simply just a true type font. Sometimes it's an open type font, but the bottom line is you just double click it, it'll open up, and then it'll show you exactly what the font looks like. To install it, just simply click that install button, and that'll install it on your Windows computer. So you could use it in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. In this case, I'm gonna be using Inkscape for, to use this font to create a design that I'm gonna sell. You know, if you've never heard of Inkscape before, it's a completely free tool that you can use in Windows and it's a free vector software tool. I really love using it. So what I'm gonna do here in Inkscape is I've got my palette set up and I'm gonna change my palette to make it the size of a t-shirt file. So this is option number one. There's really two options you can use to make money. Option number one is going to be to create some sort of a digital, say, t-shirt design. And I'm gonna do this simply by going into the page and then I'm going to select custom. I'm going to select pixels, and then for my pixels, my width is going to be 4,500, and my height's going to be 5,400. Now, you don't have to use this size, but the reason I like it is because it does mimic what's used by Merch by Amazon. So this is a popular size if you're going to sell this as a digital download, because somebody could then buy it, and they could use it as a t-shirt design. So here's my box that I'm going to create my text pattern in using my public domain font. Over on the left hand side, I've got my little text button. It says create and edit, edit text. I'm gonna click it. Now it's going to default to another font, but I'm just gonna scroll on down to find my graffiti font that I downloaded. I've got so many fonts. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to graffiti paintbrush here. Then I'm just gonna drag my box open and I'm going to type in just the word text just so we can see what it looks like. I'll do control A and then I'll just make the text quite a bit bigger. We can see there it's starting to pop up. I'll make it a thousand and we can see now it's a nice big text design. Now that's not gonna be my design. I'm just using that to highlight it. So now I'm gonna use this text and I'm gonna make a nice t-shirt design. All right, so I've got a little bonus tip here when you're doing text designs. One of the things you might run into is that if you hit the enter button, you may not be able to see what you're writing and it's because there's a box there inside of Inkscape. So what I do typically is I'll write one word per line and then I'll move it so that it's closer together. If you don't do it this way, I'll just show you an example. I'm gonna write the word text here and I'm gonna put it as a thousand and you can see nothing pops up and it's because of this box needs to be larger. You see how it disappears like that? So if I have the box really, really large, what'll happen is if you just hit the enter button, see how it's separated now? Line one and line two, there's this big space in between it. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it looks amateur. So what I do instead is I actually create three different boxes for three different lines. And then because every time you create a new box, you have to kind of start from scratch again with a small font, I just pick one of these boxes, one of these text boxes, right click, copy, click outside the box, right click, paste, and that gives me now a fourth box that I can now stick here, double click inside the box, and I can say whatever it is my text is. So it's really easy to just kind of copy and paste, and then you can just use your eyeballs and you can say, okay, this is now a text design that sits inside the overall palette. Now you could add other things to it like a graphic or borders, things like that, but I'm just gonna use this as a regular text design just like that. So now in Inkscape, I have an option. I can save this now as a vector, simply file, save as, and that'll save it as a vector file, an SVG file, 
or I can go over to the right hand side and I can export it as a PNG file. And when I do that, it would actually export the whole thing as a merch by Amazon sized 4,500 by 5,400 t-shirt design. And now I'm back inside of Windows Explorer and I can see I've got two outputs here. One is my SVG file. When I click on it, it's an edge file. So I'm just gonna move it into the uh, window here and I'll just decrease it. You can see here, this is, it says SVG up in the top and this is what it looks like. Nice looking font there. I'll close that out. And now we've also got a PNG file. And when I hover over it, you can see it's 4,500 by 5,400. And when I double click on it, it'll just open up in my picture viewer here as a PNG. And that would be my PNG file as well. So that's method number one is you can sell this now just as an uneditable digital download. You could sell it on Etsy, Creative Fabrica, wherever you like. Okay, so I'm in Affinity Photo now, and for method number two, I'm just gonna create the same text design, but in this case, I'm gonna create it in a graphics design program such as Affinity Photo. And again, I'm using the same font as before, the public domain font. Now when I go up to save it, I'm actually gonna save it as an Affinity Photo file. I'm gonna go File, Save As, and we can see here I'm saving it as an Affinity file. I'm not just saving it as a PNG. Now I will in a second, I'm gonna hit save. That now saves it as the master file and now I'm gonna export it as a PNG. I'll go file, export. And then from here I can pick a PNG file. Again, I've got my size set to 4500 to 5400 and I'm going to export this whole document. And we can see here the export file type is PNG. I'll hit save. So now I've got two files that I can sell as well. I have the original PNG here that I've got exported from Affinity Photo. That's like my t-shirt design. But I've also got the option as the actual Affinity Photo design. Now it says Affinity Designer file, but it's just because my computer's reading it as a designer file. But this is an Affinity Photo type file. This is the master file. So what I could do as well is I could grab the original font, the public domain font, and here I've just pasted it in. This is the actual font, the graffiti paintbrush font file. I could even just copy it and take it out and put it right into here, delete out the zip file. And I could sell that too. I could sell it now as a package. So this would be the digital download that you would sell, the PNG file, the underlying editable Affinity Photo file, and then also the TrueType font file. So that if somebody were to buy this from you, they could open it up inside of Affinity and they could use the font to actually create a new design if they wanted. You're actually selling the master file. That's option number two. So you can actually see this on a site like Etsy. I've typed in editable t-shirt template and here's the first result that comes up. Now this is an ad, so I'm not saying this is the best design in the world, but this is one that is at the top of the search results. Here's a t-shirt design where you can insert somebody's name. Now when you look down here on the right hand side and you have a description, it says here the fonts that are needed. They don't supply the fonts. What I'm saying is you can have a competitive advantage by supplying a similar type of design, an editable t-shirt design, and actually include the font in the bundle because the font would be public domain. It wouldn't be subject to any sort of rights restrictions. So that's a nice competitive advantage if you use a public domain font. And I do want to point out on Etsy, there is space if you want to compete in this. There's only 1908 results when I type in editable t-shirt template that's under 2000 so you could certainly scroll through and you could see if there's an area or a niche that you could compete in the idea here being that you're not only selling the t-shirt design you're selling an editable template either in Photoshop Affinity or even Inkscape where somebody could go in and they could make that design their own it's a nice competitive advantage using public domain fonts. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, I do appreciate your comments and questions down below. And here's another video on how you can use Inkscape to supercharge your passive design journey.